I had to do it. I just had to do it. This is my 1987 Mercedes 300 TD turbo diesel. It has 190,000 miles. I literally bought the car last night. I actually used to own a 1986 Mercedes 380 SL, which is one big reason why I love this 300 series. Tara and I had a lot of great memories with that car. But this is gonna be much more reliable, much more reliable, and I'll show you why. And of course, this is stock. I mean, how else would Mercedes open up that hood? This is the OM603 996 diesel motor. There is an 82 model that has over 900,000 miles. So can I expect that from this car? If you take care of it. Let's go ahead and kick the motor over. So you can hear what this thing sounds like. You put the key in, you turn it over to accessory. You wait until the glow plugs are ready to fire. When that light turns off, you can now turn it over. Here's the cool thing about this Mercedes. It just sounds so high quality. It feels high quality. Honestly, it feels better than most modern cars. I have a little bit of gas, so let's see if we can uh, do a test drive. And what's even cooler is that in 87, 87, you can control the seats. That is so freaking cool. I mean, this ride is so incredibly smooth. It goes over bumps, amazing. And yes, it does need shocks, it does. They're all leaking fluid, hydraulic fluid, and it probably needs all new bushings. Steering is very sharp, not much play in it. And for 87, that is amazing. And I really hope that gas tank is accurate. Because <laughs> if not, if not, we're gonna be pushing it back. I don't think I want to push it back down this hill. It makes less noise than both the Tahoe and the van. You know, the vibrating creaks. Only noise it's making is from the seat right here, I think. And it gets up to speed just fine. Is it extremely fast? No. But once it gets into the turbo, Get in the right gear at the right speed, it takes off. That was great. That was so great. Let's do uh, less sketchy things until we get new tires. Now that is the epitome of German engineering. With a turbo, and when it kicks on, it has 141 horsepower. And when it does kick on, you can actually feel it. <laughs> so this is my very first diesel car. I've never experienced a diesel engine before so this. So needless to say, I have a lot to learn. Let's go ahead and go over all the other great things about this car, then we'll go over <laughs> all of its many, many issues it has. The interior is nearly flawless. It looks so freaking good. The door cards, the console, the floor and the carpet. <laughs> this generation of car is just so amazing. It really is. The dash is basically flawless. Mercedes really used some material that will last literally forever. There's a minor, minor crack right up here but you can barely notice it. That's actually your first time me noticing it. The seats are so comfortable and this headrest, and it's just, just this is the right spot for a headrest. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It feels great. The seats are in better condition than my Tahoe, which is 08. This pops open just like that. And this is the little cabin here. And I'm not sure if this is veneer, but it is solid wood. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is handcrafted wood right here. I think that's wood as well. That has to be wood. Uh, get some Mercedes Benz roadside assistance if we need it. Let's see what we got. Oh, hang on. There you go. Some pins. Making some of my investment back. Tissues and whatever in there. I do have a Bluetooth radio in here, which is really nice. The windshield wiper is amazing. Check it out. You see that? It oscillates. Crazy. That's just so freaking quirky. The lights in here work fine. The sunroof, check out the sunroof. 1987, can you believe that? It might need a new motor. <laughs> it has the original med kit back here. Mercedes Benz of North America, made by American White Cross Laboratories. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. It's a little melted here, but I'm just gonna open up one box. What, what do I want to open up? This, I don't think this box has ever been opened. <laughs> there you go. I love the quirky things of these older cars. It's amazing. I even have a lot of the original paperwork in here. The owner's manual, 300D turbo. To operate the OEM stereo. The warranty it came with. This is June 89. He had the brakes and wipers replaced. So the total cost of what was done was $18, <laughs> which was the wipers and the brakes. And, but the labor pushed it over to $323. Somebody got screwed over. Because the labor rate, even back then, was $45 an hour. This is an 89. So I guess it's a good time to go over all of his issues and why this is in there. Pretty big trunk back there. Very nice. This headlight housing is busted. Somebody decided to run into something. So this bumper is a little dented. This housing itself is fine, which is good because this piece in itself is pretty expensive. But this is not too bad. And then this I could find. There's a dent on the grill. That's not very nice. We have a pretty big door dent right here. Luckily it doesn't alter the function of the door. Dent right here. And that's pretty much it for the dents. But what's worse, we have rust. A little bit of cancer right here. I poked that through yesterday. We have rust down here. This is where the jack goes on. Luckily the, the mount itself is still intact and very strong. It's just the framing around it is rusted out. Rust here, rust here, a little bit of rust right there. So cosmetically, it's not perfect. It's definitely not. Let's check out the interior and then we'll get to the mechanical issues. Overall, the interior is great. Um, it's just some delaminating here, delaminating here, some cracks right there, not too bad. These windows do not roll up and down in the back, so those windows cannot go up and down. I think that's it for the interior. It's pretty solid. Let's explain the elephant in the room. It has a blown head gasket, but all that residue on the outside of the reservoir is basically the coolant bubbling up. So it is burning coolant through the exhaust. So I need to keep an eye on that coolant level consistently and replace that head gasket as soon as I can. And it also has a pretty decent oil leak as well. Luckily, I think the oil leak is coming from the head gasket as well. So I will be replacing that. I don't know the ultimate outcome of it, but I may end up pulling the motor and refreshing all the gaskets. That's probably what needs to be done especially if I wanted to see another 200K. So, and it basically has all new brake stuff all around. I have new disc brakes all around. Yes, this 87 has disc brakes and new reservoir and, uh, you know, mass, brake master cylinder. It does have an ABS issue. Uh, it doesn't prevent it from stopping. It just feels a little weird. So I might have to tackle that at 1.2. If you know anything about the ABS issues, let me know. I'm, I want to learn. <laughs> My goal is to ultimately restore it, pair all the rust spots. Luckily the frame looks amazing. I'm very surprised, especially coming from a northern state. Maybe I'm missing something. I mean, I will get it on jack stands at one point. And it drives so solid, so solid. It drives better than the van, honestly. I'm gonna be hiding for the wind here, but I'm so excited for this project. There's so much work that needs to be done. And does that just make me happy? <laughs> Hopefully I'll get it registered here pretty soon. In the next video, I should be detailing it, cleaning it. It needs a good, good detail. This is Chris Bills and I always appreciate and respect one another. And thank you to all my patrons. Hopefully you enjoy this content. I am very happy for it. I'll see you next time. That's going in there. <laughs>